Good evening and welcome to TDM Talk Show. I'm your host, Joana Freitas. With us this evening, we have Glenn McCartney, Associated Professor in Integrated Resorts Management at University of Macau, also a tourism and hospitality consultant. Professor McCartney, thank you so much for being with us on the show once again. Thank you for your <laughs> thank invitation you. again, Joana. Um, okay, so we just finished the Golden Week holidays. Not so golden this year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, uh, was it a surprise for you seeing how, um, how few people came to Macau during this period? In fact, it was. It was a surprise for me and a surprise for the industry, I believe, too. Our expectations were, of course, more than we had got. So um, it was very, what I call it, subdued. I've seen that word being used, many of the words like this. So, yes, um, we expected more. We expected not to be what it was. So um, even with the last few days data coming in, we can still see we haven't made up the, uh, the territory we've lost. So yes, it has been unexpected. We are, we are talking about a loss <coughs> or less than 100 visitors, uh, than 100,000 visitors, yes. a drop of almost 88% compared to, to last year. The, the expectation of the industry was obviously lower because of the COVID-19, yes. but do you think the industry was a little bit optimistic? No, but e even with that, we, we said that it wouldn't be the same as last year. So you could, we could have said 40, 50 percent down. We can't crystal ball, you know, gaze. It was very difficult to say. There was too many moving parts. We've never had this scenario before. So even trying to forecast was a challenge. Mm -hmm. So we put, we put indicators like could be 40, 50, 60 percent down. But even with that, we had even less than that. So again, I believe it was a bit of a shock for investors mm -hmm. and, and also for the industry. And I think part of the reason was not just because we haven't had this before, but but um, we, we, as we mentioned before, some of the moving parts, like in China, we, we hear issues where the, the testing is not is different, different testing done in different cities, so there hasn't a standardization. Maybe people were not aware of the testing, maybe weren't even aware that you could come to Macau. And I think one of the issues we need to learn from this is, is the data. We must get more data about why people came and why people didn't come. Mm -hmm. Was it because of the logistics, the challenges, or were they aware of Macau? So I, to me, when I was getting the numbers, I started asking the why questions. Why did we not get the numbers we were expecting? To me, that's more Every, important. Everyone now. was expecting, as once Macau opened to China, the, the tourists would just start coming in. So that didn't happen. Well, that's been our sort of way of operating for the last two decades. Mm -hmm. We open the borders and the flows of traffic will come in. Obviously, this is not the case going forward for Macau. I think one fundamental lesson we have learned this time is we just can't open the borders and expect the same mentality up to 2019. Open it, build it, they will come. This is not. So we're going to have to get more strategic. And that means we're going to have to be more data driven. We're going to have to dive down more in our data to understand what I mentioned before is why did people not come? Was it because they were, because of the testing? Was it, was it because different cities have different testing? Uh, was it because of the inconvenience? Is it because China is because one of the issues, for example, is safety. Uh, it's really fundamental now in research coming out of China. People need to understand need to know that places are safe, safe to go to. That, and the measures that they were, were they getting the proper images of Macau as a safe destination, for example. Um, there's also some other, um, over the last three or four months, media reporting on Macau in terms of uh, uh, reporting about the gaming industry and you know Asian gaming industry mm -hmm. issues of liquidity and issues of we were talking about blacklisting. Do and these you, do you these think things that, that could have been also a factor. Away. I've mentioned before there was many variables, so we don't know which ones were in play. Mm -hmm. Obviously, each one may have had an impact. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand more why it didn't happen. So I hope that the industry. I think one thing we haven't been good at over the last couple of decades is industry working in partnership or the public sector working in partnership with industry and trying to work through this problem. We have a problem now. Mm -hmm. We have a problem. We see we, we, we didn't achieve what we aimed to achieve. Mm -hmm. Another thing too I was mentioning, the thing called pent-up demand. China has pent-up demand in terms of tourism and the willingness to spend. We have seen that across China's major cities in terms of retail spend, in terms of accommodation, in terms of visitor of sites that they, they go to and they spend. So it's not a case of is China willing to travel? They are traveling domestically and they are spending. Now, what one of my hopes is that as the weeks go by, the people who have been to Macau, they 
social media being a very important platform mm. to share that imagery about Macau, but also that the the we that we call okay the machines are starting to turn it that a pent up demand will start to translate down into more spend in the weeks ahead. Mm -hmm. I mean this is just the start. Let's let's face it, we are at the start of our return or yes. recovery, mm -hmm. and so hopefully this will be a signal for, um, for us to to drive that traffic down into Macau. So I think we've had some movement, so let's not lose the momentum in the weeks ahead. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the the tests being different from province to province. The, the people may not know that Macau has um, uh, certain, they think that Macau has certain restrictions. Do you think there was something missing to welcome people that come from mainland China? They, they are the major part of our tourism here in Macau. Do you think that was something not well explained? Like, if you come, you have to present this test, you can do it here. Perhaps. <clears throat> One thing is you can go to China and say, run around with a questionnaire around city, say, what do you think of Macau? And people say, oh, positive sentiment. That does not, obviously not translate it. We had some data coming in, people were very optimistic and, and, and wanted to go to Macau. That did not translate down to a mm -hmm. visit. So we need to know why. Like you say, was it the testing procedure? Was it the access issues? Was it was it because they have alternatives that were much more uh, in terms of price point or much mm -hmm. more attractive? Because over the last months, people have been traveling around China, experiencing China. So Macau has to compete with that. Mm -hmm. So we went in to compete. And uh, yes, we have the gaming industry, which is a very big um, uh, advantage for Macau. But uh, we have, for example, the tourism office in Macau, we, we do promote that. We mm -hmm. go and we promoting other types of non-gaming. And what I've seen, we had sort of a multiple messaging being delivered over the last few months between the, call the public sector, the tourism authorities in Macau, and also from the, from the private sector who were going to market on their safety and safe campaigns. With a, we had then a campaign running out that Macau has all these non-gaming. So we had different marketing messages. So maybe we need to know and, and we need a really get um, focused upon a, a more strategic messaging, I think, in the months, weeks ahead mm -hmm. and finding out what, what messaging, what medium we can use to be triggers to get people to come to Macau. Mm -hmm. This was kind of a lesson learned. Okay, we cannot expect that we're going to have this recovery to be um, fast and quick and that everyone, like you said, will open the borders and everyone is coming in like before. So moving forward, how do you think that Macau should market itself at this point and moving forward? Well, you, you, you obviously one of the things is you don't rely on a 2019 blueprint because things have changed. And that means that you, you have to reassess your 2019. You just don't roll it all out again because things have obviously changed. Some of that might work. Some of those metrics might work, but some of them may not. The, we talk about the events and entertainment world. We have to look at, we have to reassess what we've done before uh, obviously, to see if it's going to work in the future, COVID nineteen is 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 has been a, had a dramatic impact on people's way they travel, their how they assess risk and benefit. So we they have to factor this in. We just cannot roll out campaigns like we did before mm -hmm. in the hope that that's going to be sufficient. We have to get really drilled down in understanding much more about our visitor our potential visitor to Macau. So we can't have the same blueprint and the game plan as we had before. We're going to have to look at it, pull it apart and put it back together and add some new details to it. Mm -hmm. if, if you had to, if you were questioned by someone from either the government or someone that works in, in the, the publicity and promotion of Macau and they ask you, what can we do? You mentioned showing Macau as a safe city. So that should be like the first thing to do at this point and then show them other aspects of Macau that we are not used to see? Well, it's not a, a packing order you do this one and this one mm -hmm. and this one. Uh, but definitely we know from data coming out of China on research and travel data, safety and security. Uh, what does that mean in people's minds being safe? What images do they want to see? You, you know, do they want to see somebody with a, with a thermal picture? Do they want to see people cleaning a room picture? How does that make them feel? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, let's investigate that further. Is it being, you know, does that make them feel off-putted or does it make them feel, yes, that's what I like to see and that's going to attract me. So it's not, it's not just much, what does safety and security mean in the minds of a Chinese visitor? Mm -hmm. So we have to find out much more. In terms of all the other things, we have retail and not, these things are important. But, and uh, I think for many in China, they know what Macau has to offer, particularly Macau is heavily 
repetitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of repeat visitors. So a lot of people know about Macau. So yes, you have to reinforce. We have to go to market and tell, remind people what Macau is. Um, um, but I think uh, we do. One of the things I would like to see much more about is to be more data driven and much more we call feedback. We call it KPIs when we find out. Um, assessing how does our campaign, I mean, how does our media campaigns, government, the city campaigns, how we're doing all these events in the months ahead, like the Macau Grand Prix and such, mm -hmm. what does it mean to Macau in terms of driving visitation to Macau? Either visitors have been here before or cultivating new visitors. I think Macau has a great opportunity right now, mm -hmm. a great opportunity to build a new visitor uh, uh, to Macau mm -hmm. because obviously Chinese are not going out of China outbound. They're staying predominantly of course within China. So I think it's a great opportunity for Macau. It's a window of opportunity for us to go in and really um, really uh, get a new new market for China, Macau given that we have this, this uh, I don't know how long it will last before China really starts to open up to other markets again. Mm -hmm. we, ha we're ha we are seeing people back on the gaming floor, so this, which is good news. I mean, we can't say that's not. Mm -hmm. And we should now keep that momentum and we should ramp that up much more in the weeks ahead. Mm -hmm. Weeks ahead, we, we don't, as I said, our opportunity is now October, November. We, we, we must work through Q4 now and do a lot more in that area. Mm -hmm. do, do you think that this is not, this is the time that Maybe Macau can move. You say the gaming is important and it will be always connected to the industry. It, like tourism means ga gaming, gaming means economy here in Macau. Do you think it's because of all this that we are seeing, it's maybe time for Macau to move forward from, from gaming and not be so dependent on it? Or are we going to still be so dependent on it that we cannot do the, the diversification that the government is always talking about? Let's be frank, Macau will always be reliant in some largest extent on the gaming industry. I would say mm -hmm. always a long time, but it's, it's really, that's, it's, it's, it's called the major part mm -hmm. of tax revenues of the Macau government. It's going to be a long time before we move away from that scenario. But let, 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 let's go back to these integrated resort settings. They have multiple non-gaming. But what, what we've seen also during Golden Week, um, in the six months leading up to that, scaling back of non-gaming, particularly the events and entertainment area. So the offering has been scaled down in mm -hmm. terms of uh, non-gaming non product. Sure, we have food and beverage, but there's only so much food you consume, there's so much snacks you can have. Um, there's retail, so retail, I'm hearing there's retail figures. We will probably see a good retail bouncing back on retail. Mm -hmm. um, but there's only so much shopping. So there's also, but the event entertainment industry has sort of been removed from the equation because of the social distancing and group gathering. So that was one of the first things that, you know, we, we seen go we, in terms of uh, the hospitality industry. So to bring that back will take some more months ahead into next year if we want to scale that back up again, mm -hmm. the event and entertainment industry again. That will take time. So yes, in fact, the months ahead, I'd expect the gaming industry to be more centric on that area. And another reason by, obviously, is a financial reason by. The last six or seven months, the integrated resort, the gaming industry, has been losing a significant, significant liquidity. Mm -hmm. So obviously the focus will be on how can we scale back on some of their losses and sort of the gaming is the key driver. Mm -hmm. But so let's see that period of time. We, that's going to happen. Let's acknowledge that's going to happen. And as we look to next year, mid next year, the end of next year, how can then we scale up for making um, diversification efforts. Mm -hmm. So you think, you think that they are going to recover until next year, the casinos, the oh, game? It's going, to take, it's going to go into next year, going what we've seen during the Golden Week. The Golden Week was a Golden Week, but we didn't get that. It wasn't mm -hmm. a normal week. So these, some of these data points tell me that even as we ramp up towards Christmas, Christmas being another holiday, and we, again, I, I've said before, we, the virus, we don't know how, and we have to be, always look to the medical um, experts mm -hmm. about how the tourism industry should mm -hmm. um, go about you know, with travel and visitation. So we, we are, we are um, how they t dictate to us and say how we do testing, and if there's any more cases, we hope there's no more cases, but we also have to be wary that yeah. we don't mm -hmm. know uh, how that goes forward. But assuming you know, factor that into your forecasting that everything will be fine as we move towards Christmas. So you have an expectation of a, of a, of a ramping up, but I see as we go into next year that you'll see that recovery. Mm -hmm. the, the, you mentioned before in an interview that um, we're going to recover 
uh, quicker than Vegas, though. Do you still think? Are you still optimistic about? I'm optimistic that Macau will recover quicker than Vegas. We've seen, we have seen recovery this week. Mm -hmm. So, f I mean, for the reasons we have, we do have China at our, at just over the border, and that is our main patron. And we have seen the numbers that Macau has generated in the last two last two decades. So, historical data or market in China, you know, shows just in those indicators alone, that Macau will recover faster. We have, we have opened to all the provinces of China. We are the first city in the world to do that in terms of opening up. Mm -hmm. So these are big indicators of why we will recover faster. We have many mandatory, I mean, the government put in many, many mandatory conditions in place in February. I was on the show in January and we were talking about masks. Mm -hmm. We had our first case, I remember, in the sh as I talked in this yeah. show mm -hmm. about. And, I, and straight after that, we started having all these mandatory practices of mask wearing and of, of thermosensoring, of social distancing, closing uh, down the education sector, et cetera, et cetera, closing the casinos for two weeks and, and many leisure activities. So we had all of these very, very big policies in place to contain, and it worked. It worked. We seen. I was going to ask you about that. It did work. Yes, and I said mm -hmm. that, and to be complimented on how we have, and, and recent numbers of a recent survey shows how much confidence the Macau people had in the government. Just recent survey, over ninety percent mm -hmm. support. I mean, that's a big, it's a big number of the of what happened. Because the real, I think you have to be pragmatic. These things had to be put in place for to let us reopen now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a period of time. It's a prolonged lockdown, but we are seeing now what it means to recover. We really? even saw measures that were uh, unprecedented, like the closure of the closing of the casinos. Yes. Um, and everyone was kind of not knowing exactly that that was going to be good. Was that good? Those two weeks where the, where the casinos were closed kind of helped the, the situation to be more under control, you think? Well, well they reopened anyway. There was no patronage for so many months that followed anyway. But in saying that, it was an indicator that the government were, were willing to take actions of closure. And that was a very, every few days there was a new measure put in place using data to tell us, okay, we have to get more serious, more serious, more serious. And so we, we most importantly, we looked, we listened to medical data and we made that that would dictate it what we should do mm -hmm. and do it immediately because this virus, you know, will move fast. And so hence why we could recover. Mm -hmm. And um, in and my, some of my recent research I have mentioned, recovery means maybe a different way of operation in terms of consult, we need collaboration. We need now, as we come out of it, we need collaboration and consultation about what's the best way forward. And one of the issues, of course, is marketing and branding. And when, you, when you mentioned that collaboration, that consultation, you mean between government and operators? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I am a big... Um, uh, I, I support very much so in this in the in the world of tourism management and planning a collaborative approach to to um, marketing and branding and and so forth. And um, we've seen the community we we've seen the integrated resorts doing a, a lot during the uh, the six months of lockdown. We've seen their, their all their corporate social responsibility um, actions throughout. So we and we can see their involvement in the community, they have a large part of the community are employed by the integrated resort. So we've seen this 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 partnership working out well throughout the uh, the lockdown. Mm -hmm. Now as we move towards the next phase then we have to the way the, the mechanism the, the, the we, we has to change. I, what I mean is we should have collaboration, discussion and say, so we're on this we're in the same boat together. We've mm -hmm. seen the last six or seven days. It hasn't come to fruition as we thought it the market is subdued. So how can we now work together? I said things have changed now. It really is demanding much more that we sit down and think of a way forward of a clear branding, mm -hmm. a clear messaging, coming together on a social media campaign, you know, and, and so forth. So there's many ways I think we can work more together rather than uh, in isolation than sometimes what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask you, do you think because of COVID-19, the amount of people that will come to Macau to gamble will, in the future, will decrease or the revenue will go to this, the, the numbers that had before? I see many factors here. I see integrated resorts being a very, the Kotai Strip being a very attractive proposition. And if, you know, as we build, uh, almost built out with new properties coming online next year, mm -hmm. later this year, next year. So I see a very attractive Kotai Strip, the destination. I see a Heng Ching Island, 
ramping up to in terms of logistics and transportation and excess. So I see all of these things being a very positive sentiment for Macau uh, as we plan ahead. So there's a lot of, when I see these, uh, I look at transportation modes, I look at many factors as I look to see how things will try, as I look at three, four, five, six years, we try to put scenarios together. So I see Hengqing Island and, uh, and uh, I see ready with the border crossing there, the high speed train. I see some non-gaming developed over in Hengqing Island. And I see also, of course, the Kotai Strip um, being developed out more. These are very attractive integrated resorts, I see integrated resort mm -hmm. propositions. Um, I, I, I've been to Japan numerous times giving training and in integrated resort development there and they use the word integrated resort and so does Singapore and I think it's very important that we use that word a lot more. It Be catches the attention of families. Yes, mm -hmm. because they have a lot of product offering for the family in terms of what they have inside. Mm -hmm. The casino is a small part of, of what the whole integrated resort thing is. Mm -hmm. The rooms and the accommodation is, is a, a luxurious standard, you know, you have you have the Londoner coming online, you have SGM opening in the new property. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of new stuff, you know, Wind Palace is extending, everybody's extending their, putting a lot of CapEx, capital investment into the Kotai Strip. So I don't see, if anything at all, I see, again, a wind of opportunity for us to secure even larger visitation. But coming here for, to stay longer and spending across a platform of products, mm -hmm. you know. Which is also what Macau is missing, to have people to stay more than one point, Five, Something six. like this, and that's yeah. historical because they can pop back to Zhuhai and there's mm -hmm. numerous hotels there and such. And um, I, but I think, you know, what we have seen the Chinese outbound in the last decade to places like Europe and Australia, there's over 100 million outbound Chinese going to all the parts of the world to shop, sightsee, mm -hmm. many reasons. They go to Paris, they go to Milan's and Rome and New York. And we, we, we know the research tells us they do sightseeing, to shop, to eat and explore. And they're moving into another area for like, of um, motives of, uh, to seek out things and learn new things. So I think we really have an opportunity if, if, if we look at the, the changing motives mm -hmm. Why are they going to these others? Macau can also link into these as well because Macau has that offering as well. Mm -hmm. And again, we could really get some of this visitation to Macau right now. But again, you have to bring everybody together because everybody will do their own little bit of marketing mm -hmm. and also the destination. So we need to be bringing it f together in a collaborative way. And people, because then, you know, one plus one equals three and a bit of, we call the synergy. Mm -hmm. we, if we do much more of that in next year. So the, the <coughs> one of the things that that synergy comes about is when we talk about the public, the new public tender for the licenses of the casinos. There's a lot of um, of uh, issues going on in between what the operators are looking yes. for, what the government is looking for. Some analysts say that because of this pandemic, it would be better to delay this public tender because the operators are not ready to commit to certain things, certain requirements that the government is now asking because of the pandemic and yes. this. What is your opinion about that? Um, of course, the, gov the, the government has, within the law, the ability to extend. For me, looking at s several factors, I would say the government will stand on its, on what, and go, what I mean by that means it will, it will go ahead as planned. I don't see why they would extend. And the re a couple of reasons I've had behind that, historically watching Macau in 20 years on policy making, these big policy things, uh, the government has probably been looking at for some length of time and they're probably fine tuning. So, and I don't see a reason, you know, they, they say COVID-19, yes, it impacted the industry, but, but this is a policy issue. This is a, a policy, which is, I'm not saying independent of COVID-19, COVID-19 had an impact on tourism, mm -hmm. but this is a policy issue. So I think um, you, you can say it's not the right timing, but I think they could, because it's, it, it could happen on, on the government's time frame. Um, because and it's a different departments within the integrated resorts would have to resolve mm -hmm. this. For example, you're talking about a marketing operations department, but the people who would have to do a tendering is another department, and they've probably over the years been looking at this. They're not going to. It's not going to be mm -hmm. tomorrow. So there's been obviously, as we know, this is coming up to effect. Both the government and the operators are stuck looking at this, mm -hmm. and I think we've also 20 years of learning. I mean, 20 years ago, 
Um, well, I was here, for, I've been here for over 20 years, so I was here during the liberalisation. There wasn't much reference. We didn't have a co-tie. We didn't, we had a monopoly licence. We've had 20 years of referencing. We can go back five or six years and see how well the industry, the industry knows how lucrative this market is mm -hmm. and can be. So you can say, yes, we're, we're a bit of a hurt this year, but next year and the year after. So again, that tells me that we, you, you, there's no need, well, there's no, that, that the delay, that possibly won't be a delay because uh, we can see that the market could, re after COVID-19, we could return to growth, can, re will return mm -hmm. to growth because there's, there's all these, um, these things to consider, what I mentioned before. So uh, I can't see, uh, the government could keep to their time frame right now and uh, not delay it because mm -hmm. there's a, a lot of factors say it could happen. It does no good for investors around the world to have speculation always because that's that's also not good to have speculation. Mm -hmm. You know, at this time where investors obviously have put a lot of money on Kotai, the need is for them to see get a, a return to growth. Mm -hmm. And also um, having three or four more years of speculation. I don't. If they have a date, a schedule, it's go going for to the, be the on date. The table, because it's, it's a policy driven. Yeah. We've learned a lot. The government has a lot of documentation in the, vest the, 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 the the six casino licenses, of course, it's a, it's a tendering again, it's an it's a international tendering, uh, and, and the six casino sessions will have to re-tender mm -hmm. again for them. But there's, um, I mean, so I, I, I think for when it comes to investor confidence and issues of stability, I think- Something so, concrete. I think this moment with the gut, we need stability. So people say, we're gonna go ahead as planned. Mm -hmm. we, we know that's, that's, that puts some level of also, you know, uh, stability. Yeah, you know, you know. not to scare, Potential investors also. Yeah, because we we're going to keep to we're going to keep to the game plan as we prom as we said we would. Mm -hmm. But the government, of course, can move around a little bit here and there. But in terms of uh, revisions and so forth, and dialogue mm -hmm. with the industry, and so because they have a lot of reference points. But I believe that they will keep to the game plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the things that you mentioned before uh, was the the this that Macau has this ability of offering these integrated resorts one of the integrated one of the things in the integrated resorts is entertainment yes recently um we are dealing with problems with when it comes to blue cards in the tourism industry <clears throat> do you know do you have any idea the about the impact that this we lost ten thousand yes. uh, non-resident workers uh, some of them of the entertainment industry yes. how do you evaluate this policy of closing the borders including to people that work here and they are part of the, 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 this industry that makes Macau. <clears throat> well, one of the areas I do research is the entertainment the event industry and its impact on visitation to Macau. Mm -hmm. So I do look at that. Um, so if you scale back on many of the, I mean, it's a very specialist industry from performers to technicians and so forth. And as you mentioned before, some have lost their jobs and because they weren't, weren't from Macau. The, so you just don't do, two, you, a local will be very difficult to train up for the two or three weeks, uh, cannot. So one of the issues is if you want to scale back that level again, it's going to take some months because you're going to have to bring back skilled people with whether it be performers or a technician job or, and so forth because that's, that's what the event entertainment industry. Um, so they were some of the people that were, as you mentioned, that uh, were made unemployed because of the COVID-19, one of the first part of the hospitality industry was the event and entertainment world mm -hmm. because of the social distancing and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to take some more time because it means you're going to have to go back into a recruitment drive and the government are going to have to permit that to happen. So again, coming back to the issue about diversification, well, in the, game, the event and entertainment industry, it's going to take several months away because obviously we have some of these, uh, you know, the government right are, cl are now closed the borders and that's uh, when do they open, but also to on a recruitment drive. And again, these integrated resorts are going to have to go back to the government and request mm -hmm. again. It's not possible to work with only locals in this industry. Of course, some, some, but it's, there's some hospitality. I'm, 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 a, I'm obviously a professor and a teacher in this world in the hospitality. Mm -hmm. So of course we can train up in many areas, but particularly in specialist mm -hmm. technical knowledge, which the, particularly the event and entertainment world has, then you need to have certified professionals and so forth. And that can be more difficult. Macau has some vocational colleges, and over the years I've said we need more vocational training, mm -hmm. and particularly not just Macau recognized, but internationally recognized vocational, 
vocational colleges to help. In specific areas? Absolutely. So we can train locals and they can become certified. Mm -hmm. So they can, you know, we have this master apprentice system. But, uh, but I really think we then we, we could have a lot of these roles. But then we need those technical colleges and vocational colleges and, and many. We do have, of course, some vocational schools in Macau. Mm -hmm. But I think we need more, particularly in the event world, mm -hmm. because we can see some of these technicians um, are, we have to hire back in again mm -hmm. to Macau mm -hmm. because of the the role that they have, the Macau locals cannot, cannot mm -hmm. fill. Uh, we're almost uh, getting to the end of our show, so I have uh, some other questions to you. The Grand Prix is approaching. Yes. Um, do you think it's going to be uh, one momentum for Macau to get back tourists or...? Well, I, I mean, I, I'm also looking at the Grand Prix. I can see the government are, are doing a, a large spend. I mean, it's, it's not less than 10% cut on budget, so they're going to spend a lot on the on the Grand Prix. I'm sorry, I forget the figure. But um, so obviously we're going ahead. I think I've I've did a recent interview on the Grand Prix, and I and I, I, I made comment that it'll be a very Macau, China mm -hmm. focused Grand Prix for a few reasons because. To, for international drivers and racers and their crews and their teams and their supporters to come to Macau is a 14-week guarantee mm -hmm. quarantine in a hotel in Macau, mm -hmm. and uh, then they have to go out and do warm-ups and some of them have not all of them are willing to. <laughs> so it's a two-week, and some of them maybe ha you know have less races throughout the year mm -hmm. ready. So I think the scenario for Macau will be you will just have a Macau. But I think over the last two, tw 20 years also. In China, you've seen racing tracks, you've seen race teams evolve. There's an opportunity to gauge into China some some emerging racing teams, mm -hmm. and and why not? We we can cultivate that relationship. So we could have, I mean, we could have an interesting two two day three day program. We could have some exhibition. We could have some. So I think uh, we just put our thinking caps on to see how how creative and innovative we could do. But I can't really see. In my opinion, I mean, the government may have a way of a policy making, but mm -hmm. uh, international, which in terms of bringing in regional visitors uh, and racers would be very tricky unless government changes policy. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, but that also means international media and that'll also mean they won't be present, of course. Yeah. I mean, so mm -hmm. you're going to have to rely on local and, and, and China media to tr send those images. And, mm -hmm. and, and So yes, there's a challenge. Um, one of the reasons we host the Macau Grand Prix is destination image. It's, it's right up there at the front. Mm -hmm. So I really, if we're going to make a, a, a spending so much again on a Grand Prix, I think we would really want to, again, engage with an integrated resort, engage with the Koh Thai Strip, and, and, and let's do this together and make it a, a platform together, not mm -hmm. just it's happening in Macau. Sometimes the physical distance between the Koh Thai, they don't, doesn't merge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's use this again as a window of opportunity to merge together, promote what's happening in Koh Tai with the Grand Prix, and let's work together on a branding. If, if, year after year, I say, this is about the, the image of Macau, the Grand Prix. There's a lot of money spent on in terms of we're promoting Macau as an event industry and so forth and sports. So let's, let's make sure we go with that messaging into China in particular, but also globally that maybe within weeks that follow, Macau is going to open borders and mm -hmm. so forth. So I think it's a good opportunity. So let's work, let's, leave, let's see how the media strategy, the social media strategy, the use of influencers. There's lots of uh, we call bells and whistles in terms of the types of marketing <laughs> we can use. Yeah. But let's see more engagement with the private sector in this one, given that we're going ahead with a, well, a very expensive event. Mm -hmm. But let's, um, it's going to be, there's going to be less participation in terms of international, but also in terms of volumes of spectators. But of course, there'll be social distancing and the, the spectator stance. But it doesn't mean less value on... on it doesn't necessarily mean that. We could actually use it as a great platform to say, here's Macau and here's what we still... We're still here. In fact, we're more than still here. Mm -hmm. um, it's only a matter of weeks away. So it could be linked about what are our findings these last week and what then, what, how does that factor in to events. I am not a person who say we should just do lots of events and hope that the, somehow the messaging sticks we should do an event, an event, an event, an event, and somehow that's going to make a peel. Mm -hmm. I'm very much for KPIing events that, for example, how did it, why did it. So I want to see so much more feedback in, in, as we move into 2021. Mm -hmm. In the events that we do, there's a lot more justification in terms of, in terms of did this help? Why did it happen? How, e economic impact studies, social impact studies, destination image impact studies, mm -hmm. and so forth. Again, we have learned what we have learned this last three days. There's some messaging there. 
we cannot go back to market, open the doors, and it will all come back. Not the case. We now to get, we have to be more strategic, which means their events have to be much more strategic. Mm -hmm. On that note, how long do you think it's sustainable to remain closed for? Well, we're not closed. We're open. <laughs> so we are... Very restricted, though. We, we are not allowing foreign tourists to come in. Uh, but foreign tourists are, are small, a few percent of, of our visitation. Let's get real, because mm -hmm. it's not, it's not a, a big part of our, of our visitation. So you think last. that doesn't have a big impact on the... No. In terms of international traffic, no. Mm -hmm. um, Hong Kong, there's some discussion about reopening there in the weeks ahead. Let's see how that comes, because that's a good market as well for Macau. Should we open with Hong Kong, though? But I think the... Without, I mean, opening, I mean, without the quarantine and all the... No, I don't think that we should be opening now. Or like the recovery of the revenue we're talking about. Also, the amount of people, the mass gaming, uh, will go to this, the, the numbers that had before. I um, before we, we discuss the, the, the fact that we are still almost closed, not only we are open to China, but we're almost close to the rest. Uh, oh, yeah, I think everybody agrees with that. Macau and China, we have that now in place. It's been a cautious recovery. Mm -hmm. We did it, we started off with Zhuhai and then we went to Guangdong. It's been a, it's been a cautious, slow approach and it's working and mm -hmm. we hope it works. So I believe right now is the right thing we're doing. We have this opportunity to engage much more in China. Without, we don't need, we, we, I think if we have a China engagement strategy in the months ahead, that will be very good for Macau as we ramp up to really good revenues at the beginning of next year. Mm -hmm. All right, let's hope that that happens and Macau can move forward. That's all the time we got. Thank you so much for being you, with Joanna, us for on the us. show. That's all the time we've got. TDM Talk Show will be back next week with another guest. Have a good night.